In this video, you will learn how you can make an electromagnetic levitation device. It's very simple. When completed, it will look like this. Now how this circuit works is pretty simple. Let me bring it a little closer. All right, now this right here is just a heat sink that I added to the coil that I wound because it will get it'll get fairly hot if you run it a long time. So I added this aluminum heat sink to dissipate some heat. Now how this works, ordinarily when power is supplied to this electromagnet here, which I got out of a relay, I stripped the windings out of it and I wound I think this is 26 gauge. You're supposed to put around, I think, 1,200 turns, and I just kept winding and winding. When I was done, I made sure my resistance was between 6 and 8 ohms, which this is. So that's how I did that. Inside this rubber tube is the infrared LED. And on this side, you have your infrared photodiode. Now this circuit has an operational amplifier at 4558. The MOSFET that I used is an IRF540. You have about three or four resistors, a couple electrolytic capacitors, and that's about it. Ordinarily when you supply power to an electromagnet, something containing iron will pull right against it and will stay there until power is released and then it will fall down. Now in order to have something levitate, you basically have to have the power going on and off, on and off to keep it suspended in a certain spot. So how that is done, you have an infrared LED inside this tube. And the light that's emitted by the infrared LED is picked up by this infrared photodiode in this tube. So right now with the infrared LED shining on the photodiode, that indicates that there's nothing in the way. This electromagnet has full power supplied to it. So it wants to pull the object up. Now once the beam is blocked, what will happen, the coil, the power will drop off. So it's no longer getting 12 volts. It might get like 3 or 4. And in order to keep something levitated, what has to happen is the magnet right now is going to want to pull the object up. But as soon as it pulls it up, it starts to block so in order for this to work, the object would be positioned below the tubes and the power's on. Now the magnet will start to pull the object up. Once the object rises up, the beam will start to get blocked. So once the beam gets blocked, power to the coil goes off. Once the power goes off, what will happen, the object will fall and then the, the beam will connect again, allowing power to go back to the coil. So you're having this falling action and pulling action, falling and pulling, falling and pulling. But it's happening so quickly that you don't see it going up and down. So that's why when you turn it on it just doesn't stick to the magnet because once it goes up the power goes off and once it drops down the power goes on. So it'll keep it right on the edge between on and off and it'll just float there. So it's pretty simple. I will put the link in the description box for this. Okay, now that's the schematic. You pretty much have your positive and negative, 12 volts. You go a little higher if you want. I have a 1,000 microfarad, 1,000 UF capacitor, a 180R, a 180-ohm, 2-watt resistor. It is in series with the infrared LED. That is always on when the circuit's on. Then you have a 4.7K resistor connected into a reverse biased infrared photodiode. Once the light shines on it, it begins to conduct and it will go to ground. By grounding that out, pin 2 starts to drop in voltage, turning on power at the gate. So as the power goes up, 
the MOSFET turns on, allowing the electromagnet's power to flow to ground or to the negative. You have a voltage divider right here, 22K, 22K. That flows into 3, pin 3. So it's monitoring between these two pins, the voltage. And that's pretty much it. You just have a reverse bias diode to protect against back EMF for killing the MOSFET. And your 1200 turns of 0.4 millimeter wire, which is roughly 26 gauge, wrapped around an 8 millimeter core. In this case, mine is a square laminated core, which works fine. And you could use an IRF Z44. You can use an IRF 540. You could use a lot of different MOSFETs for this. All right, I'm going to demonstrate now how it works. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this battery right here, which is a triple A, has some good weight to it. I'm going to supply power to the circuit with my trusty little power supply here. And this is roughly 12.5 volts, so it's like using a car battery. Turn it on. Okay, now I'm going to just put the battery right there. And there you go. It'll stay perfectly steady. Look at that. Get a little closer. Just hanging there, suspended. Let's give it a little bit of a spin. It's a neat little circuit. Now to set this up, you're pretty much going to bolt on your coil like I did, the electromagnet. And then you want to center the infrared LED maybe 5 sixteenths of an inch below the end of the iron core of the electromagnet. Once you do that, then you want to adjust the spacing. And the way to adjust the spacing is you're going to put a digital multimeter on the two wires leading into your electromagnet and you're going to monitor that. When this is out of there like that, the voltage should be high. It should be around 11, 11 and a quarter volts. And when, this, when it's blocked, if I put my finger between everything, it should drop to zero. So if you take this out like that, if you take that out, and you're not getting 11 and a half volts at the top or 11 and a quarter. That means your spacing is too far apart. So just try bringing them a little closer together. And if that doesn't work, you may want to try a different photodiode. Or you might want to adjust the value of R1. Now I used a half inch thick piece of pine that's 4 inches wide by 6 inches long for this piece. And this is roughly 6 and a half, 7 inches long for the base. Same pine. These rails, you're going to have to uh, adjust to the thickness that you require to get the right spacing with the coil, with the electromagnet. So that's all up to you. I have a hole drilled in my circuit board in two spots, and I just screwed it in. And just make sure you have a heat sink on the MOSFET. It'll get fairly hot, but not too hot. The electromagnet will actually get hotter, so that's why I have this on there.